Hello and welcome back to West Monmouthshire. This place is outstanding, it is brilliant. I know the members in the bar down over the hill there will be muttering about how I'm so lucky to come up here on a day without wind. But it is, it's starting to get up a bit and I'm certain that once we get up there, it'll blow a little bit more. But I'm a planner for a living. I didn't turn up today by accident. Right, the back nine starts with a par three that's a shade over 200 yards, and uphill, and back into the breeze. So uh, whilst I've been getting away with murder on the front nine, the back nine just might squeeze me a little bit. Looking down into the valley round here, I mean it's... Yeah, if you're in the office right now, I've only got one thing to say and that's... I don't mind telling you that this 10th, especially into the breeze here, it's quite intimidating. Even for a five handicap, this is a beast. I'm proud of that one. There's a few sheep truckles on this green, but not on my line, so I'm all right. Oh wow! When I stood on the tee box, I didn't imagine I'd be walking off with a par. Right, 11 is a shortish par 5 from the yellow tees. From the whites, it's considerably longer. Well, that's another one of them pop-up drives that goes about 200. In the bristly rough. So I'm looking to move this about 190, something of that order. And that's never pop up. I've hit that about 110 yards. So, pitching wood. I've blown the birdie. Holy shit! Wow, that only just missed. Twelve is interesting. The fairway's out there to the left, and then down the right, there's a number of grass bunkers. So it's it's sort of like a fake dog leg to the right. I've had a little laser. I can get over everything, unless, of course, I pop it up again off the top edge. This is killing me. Yeah. These popped up drives are killing me. I've, I've hit that 197. 
We've got 112 left. It's the end of the breeze. You can probably hear it on the microphone. I'm going 9 iron. Can't see where it's finished in this light. How can you drive the ball so badly and walk off with a bird? That's, that's just, that's just ridiculous. 13 is, again, it's a short par five. The competition tee is actually 90 yards behind this tee box. So I can't imagine how long this plays uphill and into the breeze for the members on their competition today. So, uh, I'm very lucky. The hilltop grass here, the rough is very sort of bristly. I'm sat right on top of those bristles, so there's every danger I'll go underneath it. I mean, you've seen me do that already. I got 77, I'm going with a 50 degree, and uh, I need to get well left of this flag. I mean, that, that is ultra safe. Just want to double down on what I said on the front nine. The green fee is 15 pounds. The view, they throw in for nothing. So from the highest tee box in the UK, we got a nice downhill hole. All I got to do is find the fairway. I enjoyed every second of that and I did bring a spare ball in case I screwed it up. This is a shot I like, a shot where you can get inventive. I'm going to land this 20 yards short of the green with a punchy 50 degree and just let it run the rest. And that's finished up in birdie country. the 15 goes across the shoulder of the hill now I actually hit a decent drive here but the wind is getting up and this drive is right into the teeth of it so it hasn't gone as far as I thought 
And I don't know what I'm doing here. I got the wrong club. I needed an eight, maybe even a seven. And this is just a sloppy oh, bogey. Yes, That pitched about six or seven feet short the back of the green and stopped on the green. That's amazing. So this hole dropped about 120 feet, 130 feet, something like that. And I've played this type of hole before and I've always found the best way of tackling it is to pitch it full toss onto the green and not try and run it down the hill. As soon as you run it down the hill, you've lost control of where the ball finishes. So always try and pitch it on full toss. Let me tell you now, this is one of the most outstanding par threes I've ever seen. It's all mounds and shoulders and hidden green and hidden flag. You just see the top of the flag, it's 148, it's back into the breeze, I'm hitting the 6. Because to be short would be criminal, so long is my favourite. I don't know, because I can't see part of the green. Let's go down and find out. Alright then guys, the 18th, so I'm going to say goodbye here, as usual. I've had a, an outstanding day on an absolutely amazing golf course. Now they've got something at the end of this hole which is very, very useful. It's called a bar. And they have things in the bar which are cold and wet and come in pint glasses. I thought my drive was okay, but I've driven it 290 down this wind. Now there's a second tree that you can't quite see. 
I have got a clear route to this flag. So I'm going sand wedge. Instead of chipping and running it with, say, an 8 iron, this is a 40 yard sand wedge. And I get to have a second go at it. What a shame. But then I think it was a bad choice. I think the 8 iron chip and run onto the green, two putts, par, was the correct choice. Oh, don't we just love hindsight? Alright guys, one final thing before I go. I've been in for a couple of pints and I got my West Monmouthshire Golf Club. This is to certify that he's played the highest course in the United Kingdom. Well that's a really nice touch to end your day. So um, why don't you phone up? Book a tea time. This place is outstanding. I mean, really, really outstanding. Ta-ra.